Thank you for taking the CMC RENS online training. This video will take you through the basic app features, go through the various assessments, and give examples of the metrics they include and what those metrics are trying to measure. By the time you are done, you will be ready to become a citizen scientist by collecting data through the RIMS program anytime you get out on public lands. The CMC RIMS program was launched in 2019 to help land managers collect and utilize crowdsourced data to better understand and address critical issues related to recreation and natural resources. The popularity of public lands is swelling. Technology is changing both the adventure landscape and the physical landscape, and our community and its needs are evolving rapidly. Recreation types are changing. Concentrated use in certain areas is dispersing recreation to previously low or no use areas. Data collection helps agencies increase efficiency and improve performance by understanding and mitigating impact while prioritizing areas of critical concern. The mobile app is just the front end of the larger RIMS program. Data is saved in a cloud-hosted repository and run through algorithms which create dashboards that help land managers interpret and effectively utilize the data. We provide land managers with custom dashboards using geographic filtering to build a data story. CMC is working with a variety of land managers, partner organizations, and other volunteer groups to process and utilize the data for rapid response stewardship projects and long-term recreation planning. The RIMS mobile app is a data collection tool which includes GPS point data, detailed surveys, photos, offline functionality, and editing and sharing features. Information is entered through a series of drop-down surveys. You can report trail maintenance needs, inventory campsites, track visitor use, report conflicts and violations, and more. You'll be able to view and submit assessments while offline, so you can still use the app while in the backcountry. The data you collect goes directly to land managers so they can prioritize hotspots and deploy crews to work on trail issues. You can also share assessments directly to volunteer groups or land managers and archive them once the issue has been taken care of. We'll begin with the app menu represented by the three lines in the top left hand corner. Once you've downloaded the app, the first thing you will need to do is fill out your user profile. This helps us to understand our user base and to contact you with app updates. Your personal information is kept private and not viewable by other users. An in-app tutorial is available in the menu, which will walk you through the various features and RIMS and how to use them. You can also access the tutorial through the About page. In this page, you can get technical support, learn more about the CMC and the RIMS program, support for RIMS, and check your app version to be sure it is up to date. An important component of the app is the offline functionality. The app uses the internal GPS locator and will still work without cell service. You can toggle between online and offline maps as you go in and out of service. A variety of downloadable offline maps are available as a base layer to use when working outside of cell service. This map must be downloaded before going into the field. If you are planning on using the RIMS app to resurvey assessments in the field and won't have service, be sure to load the assessments while you are still in service and don't exit out of the app. Some basic app features on the home screen are located on the upper left-hand side. The target button will zoom to your location so you can create an assessment where you are located and see the map around you. The checkmark button will create a check-in. This is available to all app users and can be used for personal visitor use monitoring to keep track of the places you go. Monitoring is the main feature of the app. Click the plus button to view all the monitoring modules and to create a new assessment. Once you complete this training in the quiz, you will have access to all six monitoring modules. Any new modules that are added to the app in the future will be added to this list of assessments. You can view all existing assessments within the RIMS app. To view your assessments, select My Assessments from the app menu. You can click any of the assessment types from the app menu to see a list of those assessments. From there, you can sort them. You can sort by date or location. You can also show assessments on the map. From the home page, you can click the Filter Assessments button to just see a certain type of assessment 
assessments created within a certain time period, or assessments created by certain users. You can also zoom into a location to view assessments within that location range. You can click on any of the assessments to see all the information and photos collected within that assessment. Collect data based on the specific fields listed in each assessment. You do not need to fill out every single field or category in the module, as some may not be relevant to the issue you're reporting, but try to be as detailed as possible and fill out as much information as you can. Assessments with an arrow next to them have a drop-down menu of options you can select from. If you are confused about a metric in an assessment, you can click the information icon for help. Make sure to check out the RIMS terminology sheet online to review some common recreation resource terms. When you view assessments, some issues will be highlighted in red based on trigger points we've identified that will direct land managers to the most critical problems that need addressed. You can resurvey assessments and update them with the latest conditions. None of the previous data is lost, but we will be able to see the updates. Click on the three dots on the upper right corner to see more options. You can edit, but only your own assessments and not those of other users. Once an issue is taken care of, you can archive the assessment in order to hide it from your home screen. You also have the ability to share an existing assessment as a PDF via text, email, or another source. Now we will walk through how to submit an assessment. Some basic functions that are in every module in the app are the location name and coordinates. This could be the name of the area or the route number or something that would make sense to a land manager trying to locate the issue. Make sure location services are enabled and allowed through the app for your coordinates to auto-populate. You can adjust the coordinates by centering them manually or selecting your location on the map. For instance, maybe you take a picture of an issue but forgot to do an assessment. You can enter the coordinates and create an assessment retroactively and still submit the issue. Photos are an extremely important and helpful tool for land managers. Try to submit a photo with every assessment. To do so, scroll to the bottom of the assessment and select Upload Images. You'll have the option to submit a photo from your phone's gallery or take one with your camera. Only take pictures of the issues that you're reporting and avoid taking pictures of people, if at all possible. Most questions in the app try to stay objective. However, there is one subjective question. What we want to know with this question is whether the condition of what you are surveying meets agency standards and how well you think it meets or doesn't meet those standards. After you've submitted an assessment, you will need to save and sync it. There is an option to save an assessment as a draft that will allow you to return to edit or add information and photos before submitting. An orange sync button will appear when you've saved an assessment offline that needs to be uploaded to the cloud. It will disappear once all of your saved assessments have been synced. Now let's take a closer look at each of the individual modules. There are currently six modules, including a rapid trail assessment, dispersed campsite assessment, signs and facilities inventory, visitor use monitoring, and stewardship report. The quick report is available for any app user, even if they haven't taken the training. As a volunteer, you will have access to all of the modules, but not the quick report. With each module, be sure to scroll, expand the fields, and answer any sub-questions that appear. As we dive into each specific module, we won't walk through every single drop-down issue. We strongly encourage you to explore the app on your own to familiarize yourself with the options. We also encourage you to check out the RIMS terminology page to understand what some of the drop-down options mean if you are not already familiar. The important thing to remember when completing any assessment is, what details do I need to include in my report for this issue to be resolved? Both the notes and the photos sections are extremely helpful to understand the details and nuances and to explain anything that might not make sense or is missing from the assessment questions. For all modules, including the campsite assessment, we use the same terminology, categories, ranking, and inventory systems used by federal agencies. For example, wilderness characteristics or trail assessment and condition surveys terminology, such as ground disturbance rating, disturbed area rating, etc. 
The camping assessment is meant for use in dispersed sites. Of course, you can survey in designated sites or campgrounds, particularly if there are resource or structure issues or other impacts that are affecting the site. Do not survey sites that are occupied. Residential use constitutes a campsite that has been occupied for greater than 14 days. In these cases, you can still submit an assessment to inventory the campsite and mark the location in your map. Indicate in the notes section that it was occupied and will need a full assessment in the future. The Science and Facilities module is very straightforward. It can be used for issue management as it relates to damaged or graffitied signs, or to inventory where certain signs or facilities such as benches, picnic tables, fire rings, etc. are located. When inventorying signs, pay attention to the information that is present. Is it clear? Is it current? Is it seasonal? Is it accurate? Be sure to include this information in your assessment. Visitor use monitoring is available to any RIMS user. There is a long list of user types, including both summer and winter activities. The goal of this module is to collect observational data counts of users on public lands. For example, you can count how many cars are at the trailhead and where any overflow is happening, or how many hikers, skiers, bikers, etc. you encounter on the trail. This helps land managers to understand things like visitor use versus impacts, and changes over time. Land managers can anticipate trends and plan accordingly. Again, we ask that you don't take any photos of people, but photos of parking lots can be especially helpful in estimating capacity. Land managers hear of conflicts and violations frequently, but often anecdotally. The idea behind this module is to gather data on where and how often conflicts and violations occur. Data collected through this assessment will provide useful information and show if there are patterns occurring in certain areas that management actions can address, such as turning a trail into one-way traffic to reduce user conflict or adding a bridge over a sensitive habitat area that is being entered. We have base maps available that show different recreation zones like wilderness areas, motorized use allowed, motorized use not allowed, etc. These maps will help with determining whether a certain type of use is in violation in that area. When in doubt, refer to regulatory signs on the ground in the area. You will have the option to submit this assessment anonymously. Please use this assessment only if you witness a conflict or violation as it is happening or see evidence of a violation that is not covered in another assessment. Graffiti, trash dumping, and social trails are all covered in other assessments. Specific metrics are built into this assessment that should help to prevent rants or false reports. Please keep in mind that the violations and conflicts assessment is not meant as an enforcement tool, but as a data collection tool. Please call your local law enforcement officer to handle any issues. There is a difference between a poor choice and a conflict or violation. For example, in the picture on the left, maybe the road was not closed, but they still should not have driven it. It was not technically a violation, just a really bad idea, which could result in a conflict if it ends up getting stuck and blocking traffic. However, if that same car was driven before the road was opened, during a seasonal closure, or the wrong direction on a one-way road, that would be a violation. The picture on the right shows an example of an obvious violation where someone has parked in a no parking zone. When you are submitting a violations and conflicts assessment, please use common sense and give other users the benefit of the doubt. Finally, there is the stewardship report module. You can submit stewardship reports for activities you do on your own or with a group. You don't have to submit a separate RIMS assessment for a downed tree, for example, if you plan on just cutting it out of the trail yourself. If you're the kind of awesome person who picks up trash they find along the trail while hiking, you can log that in a stewardship report. Please note that if you are completing stewardship on an issue identified through the RIMS app, make sure you resurvey and archive the original assessment in addition to your stewardship report. There are a couple of companion apps that we recommend that can enhance your experience as a RIMS user. GPS test makes sure that your GPS location is accurate. Fields area measure is helpful to accurately measure the lengths of a social trail, the area of a campsite, etc. We recommend that you come up with a data collection plan for how you want to use RIMS. For example, consistent visitor use assessments at a certain time or place, or periodic assessments when you see an issue. You can check with local land managers or volunteer groups 
to see what type of data they are most interested in and base a data collection plan off of their recommendations. Make sure you sync data before you head into the field and don't close the app if you are planning to resurvey assessments. Relaunch the app occasionally to check for updates. If you have any feedback on the app, you can get in touch with us by emailing us at conservation at cnc.org. If you have not already downloaded the RIMS app, you can do so on your Apple or Android device. Don't forget to rate and leave a review. Once you have downloaded the app, make sure to sign up or sign in using the same email address you used for training registration. You may need to re-sign in to your account to see your upgraded volunteer status. Now that you've completed the online training, you are ready to take the quiz to get full access. We will then upgrade your account to a volunteer status to give you full access to all the modules. Thank you for using CMC RIMS.